All right, so I was going to make a video about this uh, this issue, and then and then I watched five minutes of twenty minute video of Gary's about five and a half minutes until the point I realized he blocked because I've had enough of that. I don't need to watch the rest of that video. So the it's funny. So it, Gary blocked me because. I made a comment in a Napalm the Phoenix video. And the comment was to the effect that, paraphrasing Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson was, in fact, and technically, a rapist. Now, Gary blocks me for that because he takes that as a personal threat. Why? Because he generally thinks people that want to argue about this should all be on one side no it's because this is really the proxy for the question of if Franks is a bad character at least that's how I got into noticing this conversation Evidently, there's a video off somewhere of Gary's in which Frank's makes a response. I don't think I've seen that video. So Gary is saying he doesn't want to condemn Jefferson as a rapist, as a sidelight, as a whole video, I don't know, and Frank's is evidently agreeing with that. And Unseen Perfidy, let's put him up here, Perfidy, wants to point at that. That's supposed to be a hand with a finger, sorry. Anyway, he wants to point at this. He wants everybody to know that Franks is a rape apologist. Oh, and by the way, Gary too. And that's where Gary's personal feelings come in. Which is entirely beside the, the point. Right? The real point is what does this have to do with Snowden? If Franks is a rape apologist because of this effect, a uh, slave rape apologist, how does that affect his support for Snowden and the other conversations, the related conversations that are actually behind Unseen Perfidy wanting to have this arrow? Does, do these really relate? Why no, of course they don't. But Gary, in his infinite lack of wisdom, is willing to accept that this dynamic of these arrows is really important. And someone like me, I'm an idiot. Because all I need to do is argue that Thomas Jefferson's not a rapist. And then Frank's character is good. And Gary's character is good. And Unseen Perfidy has no more complaints about Frank's. But what would really happen is if that complaint was cleared up, this network of arrows would basically remain. This would change to lie about my position. My vague position. Only this isn't as exciting. Because who cares about somebody lying about somebody's position when that somebody whose position is being allegedly lied about doesn't want to take chances to clarify their goddamn position. I don't care. But I know that something would go in here to fill this role. Because these are the important things. And Gary buys all that. Yes, we must do this. It's, it's what I call associational... logic it's the logic about it's about judging something based on who you associate with with the thing and with each other association all logic group thinking faction insisting you must denounce that person or you must not say that you must don't, don't ever I might be a little bit wrong but in an argument you know don't ever go up be ambiguous which side you're on certainly don't be on the other side and all that bullshit 
which Gary knows perfectly well I don't play. But Gary should be smarter and not play it himself. This is rigged for Gary to lose, Gary. If you're wondering why your rhetoric is so easily dismissed, it's because you play games like this. And Unseen Perfidy is going to slap you around all day long if you play this game. If you're not smart enough to see how what my what my position is and how me saying that technically and in fact Thomas Jefferson is a rapist doesn't hurt your position rhetorically or any other way and that if it's such a big deal it ought to be what we're really talking about right that we ought to be really talking about about uh, Thomas Jefferson and if you think that's what we're doing we're a bunch of people just interested about this issue because see then you're sadly mistaken everybody understands the picture you were talking about Gary of it was almost a family situation. They were in a country where there was no slavery. She was the basically the nanny of the girls. and Everybody knows that. We're not a bunch of poets having a subtle discussion about what that means, how it might have felt, what the, which emotions were involved. I say he's a rapist because slaves can't consent. So that is slave rape, just like party rape and date rape, acquaintance rape, you know, the rape of... To a serial murderer, rapist. There's various kinds and various ways of apologizing for these various kinds of rape. I don't think that's the issue we're discussing. It's an interesting issue. I'd go into it, but we're really discussing unseen perfidies, excuses for not talking to people that differ with from him politically. And you, Gary, in your infinite stupiditude, totally by that hook, line, and sinker. You will block people based on the fact that I reject that whole framework of an argument and insist that we all discuss unseen perfidies, accusations against people he doesn't want to talk about about other things. See, I would say it's a better rhetorical and more honest and smarter approach to attack the real issues. And I will talk to you about Thomas Jefferson, the people that really want to talk about those issues. Because, yeah, he was also a debtor, and he was also a slave owner. No, there's no controversy there. That's not a pretty thing. Why, why are people still feeling like they have to justify these people? Like what? If I admit that it was wrong and don't give them a break and a pass for Thomas Jefferson and George Washington to own slaves, what, suddenly I'm not going to believe that the Constitution is the law of the land? It doesn't work like that. All right, Martin Luther King had extramarital affairs. Deal with it. You know, Gandhi didn't educate his kids in the same way that he had enjoyed. None of them got enough education to go to law school and do what Gandhi did. People could judge that. Your hero, there's no such thing as heroes. The real issue is the part where Unseen Perfidy, who knows full well the, the subtleties of this issue you just give him a wedge where he can take a liberal PC brood and make you guys def defend a rapist and you're just going to buy that hook, line, and sinker and I'm the idiot because I recognize that obviously that is technically rape just like sleeping like a 40 year old sleeping with a willing 13 year old I'm going to count that as technically rape is apologizing for slave rape as bad as apologizing for slavery, making an apology for slavery? Is it the same or as bad as saying women should dress more conservatively or else they're asking for it? Those also are interesting questions that are not really what we're talking about. We're really talking about is unseen perfidy a scared little frighty boy? Or are these really solid reasons? Is he offended that somebody might want to cut Jefferson a break? And if he is, is it because of what Jefferson did, or is it because Jefferson is the first Democrat? Anyway, thanks for blocking me. I think that gave this much more of a substance as to what it was about, and I was going to make the video anyway, but now people can get the idea. You know, it, it's a good contrast. Unseen perfidy blocked me because I won't denounce somebody. Gary doing basically the same thing as he always had. You two are match made in heaven.